Hey guys, what's good? Derek here from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So I want to get into some cool verses. Just These are the remaining verses of John chapter 1, and I've always loved these verses because we go from John's testimony of what John the Baptist talked about to all of a sudden a practical example of what it means to actually follow the Savior Jesus Christ. And so you go into verse number 35, which I think is cool. It says, again, the next day after John stood, now this is John the Baptist, and two of his disciples. Now, it does tell us later on that one of those disciples is a man named Andrew, okay? And we'll talk more about him. The other one, it doesn't say. It almost alludes to this, and this is just my opinion. It almost makes it sound like this is John the Beloved, John himself. Um, we don't know that. We don't know. There's all kinds of people who have speculated of who this could possibly be. We don't know. But as you're reading through this, it might very well be John. But anyway, there's two disciples of John the Baptist who are just talking to John. Verse 36, and look Looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. I love that. They love John the Baptist enough to just be like, um, You love this guy? And then we need to love him too. Verse 38, Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? And they said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? Like, where do you live? Can we come hang with you? And he saith unto them, these three amazing words, which you see often in this chapter, come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day. And it was about the 10th hour. So they're with him a little while. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew. That's what we mentioned earlier. Simon Peter's brother. Now verse 41. He first findeth his own brother Simon, which I think is so cool. Here's Andrew. He's like, um, I got to go find a family member. I got to go find my brother Simon. So he understands who this Jesus is. He findeth first his brother Simon and saith unto him, we have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. Now verse 42. He brought him to Jesus. I think that's so cool. It's like, come and see. I will show you who Jesus is. And when Jesus beheld him, meaning Peter, he saith, thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation, a stone. Now the footnote gives us a nice little dimension there. It says the Greek stone or pebble. It's like, you're awesome, but you're small. And I'm going to get you even bigger here. So the Joe Smith translation of that verse, Cephas, which is by interpretation, a seer or a stone. And they were fishermen and they straightway left all and followed Jesus, which is so cool. It's like, come and see. Once they see who he is and Jesus acknowledges who you are, you follow him. Now, what happens is this domino effect starts happening. Verse 43, the day following, Jesus would go forth unto Galilee, and he findeth Philip, and saith unto him, follow me. So you see what happens right here. It's just this come and see, come and see. Let people experience who Jesus Christ is. And as they do that, he will invite them and then they can see who he is. Now, the church did a little initiative a couple of years ago. It just it talked about come and see, come and share, come and invite. And we'll talk more about that in a second here. But there's a video here that, that was put together. There's actually several that are awesome, but I really like this video here. Uh, if you're listening to this on our podcast, uh, you may want to go check over it on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook and you can see the video that goes with it. It is awesome. So check it out. Okay. Sharing with other people things that are most meaningful to us or have helped us is not unusual at all. This same pattern is especially evident 
in matters of great spiritual importance and consequence. The invitations we extend to you to learn about and test our message grow out of the positive effects the gospel of Jesus Christ has had in our lives. Sometimes we may be awkward or abrupt or even relentless in our attempts. Our simple desire is to share with you the truths that are of greatest worth to us. Now, with regards to what you just watched right there, um, a few years ago, I was called to be the ward mission leader in my ward, and I was asked to put together a ward mission plan. Now, the previous ward mission plan was done by a wonderful, faithful man, uh, but this ward mission plan was like literally like six pages long. And as I was going through this thing, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, there's so much in here. It was very complicated. And I am not a complicated guy. I'm pretty simple. And so I started reading, and I started studying, and I came across this chapter. I came across a few other books. And honestly, I turned in a word mission plan that simply just said, let's just invite others to come into Christ and then let Jesus Christ do all of the heavy lifting. Let the Holy Ghost do what he does so well. Our responsibility is to invite. You go to the very start of Preach My Gospel and it lets you know that your missionary commission is to invite others to come unto Christ. That is the number one thing that you do. Uh, Elder Gary E. Stevenson in conference, if you've watched, one of the things he talks about is the concept of love, share, and invite. In fact, he said, consider ways that you can love, share, and invite. This concept of come and see. As you do so, you will feel a measure of joy knowing that you are heeding the words of our beloved Savior, which again, this idea of come and see. Sometimes we try to take all that responsibility on ourselves. We need to invite others to come into Christ and then let him do what he does so well. That takes so much pressure off of us. It makes missionary work so much easier. Just invite, come and see, let Jesus do what he does so well. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and thanks so much for sharing these messages. We're so grateful that you do that. And please go out and check out our amazingly comfortable gospel theme socks at bombsocks.com. You guys have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Godspeed. Bye-bye.